Welcome to the Disney Scrapbook, where together we take a journey to explore Disney history from 50 years ago. My name is Nolan. This is part two of my trilogy on the Walt Disney Studios 1971 film, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. If you missed part one on the history behind the film, I will leave a link to that video in the description down below and suggest that you start there. This family-friendly, enchanting musical fantasy film has always been overshadowed by its August 1964 Disney predecessor Mary Poppins. However, it possesses the same technical skills, magical music, and professional polish. As I stated in part one of this trilogy, the film was based on two stories written by British children's author Mary Norton. The Magic Men of How to Become a Witch in Ten Easy Lessons and Bonfires and Broomsticks, both published in the 1940s. Although the books are somewhat dark in content and tackle issues of war, witchcraft, and cannibalism, the screenplay, written by the Poppins duo Bill Walsh and Don DeGuardi, turned out somewhat lighter. This was initiated by the songwriter Robert Sherman, who had personal experience of the horrors of war. The books were set in various time periods, including the Great Fire of London in 1666, World War II, and just after World War II. However, the film version of the stories does not involve time travel and is set during the fall of 1940, during World War II when London was being heavily blitzed by the Nazis. In the book, the children are sent to Bedfordshire to spend summer with their aunt. However, in the film, they are evacuated from the east end of London to an imaginary place in the country. Pepperidge Eye. Pepperidge is a North American tree that produces black gum, has exceedingly tough wood, handsome leaves, and acidic berries, which describes the inhabitants of this village perfectly. In Old English, an eye is an island or land by water. A house of this price that the children are built to is on a cliff by the sea. This imaginary village is set near Corf, Dorset. Other scenes in the film are located in Lewisham and Notting Hill, London. The heroine of the story, an eccentric spinster, Eglantine Price, played by Angela Lansbury, is an apprentice witch. Learning how to perform witchcraft in the hopes of using it against Nazi Germany. By the secret studies and activities harder to conceal when three young children, Charlie, Carrie, and Paul, are billeted with her. However, upon learning her secret, the children are determined to help her. And when she receives a letter from Amelia Brown, the professor of her correspondence school, stating that the course has been cancelled, she and the children take a magical journey to London on a bewitched bed to find the infamous professor. And the final incantation of a spell that she requires for her plans to help the British war effort. Unfortunately, Amelia Brown, played by David Tomlinson, turned out to be nothing but a con artist and showman. An incredible adventure ensue on the group's quest to find the remaining papers that contain the spell. Upon returning home, Miss Price is able to use the incantation to raise up a ghostly array of armor to thwart a landing by German commandos on the British beach. Eglantine Price is played by award-winning actress and Disney legend named Angela Bridget Lansbury, whose film career debuted in 1944 with Gaslight and who is better known to TV audiences as Mrs. Fletcher on the mystery detective series Murder, She Wrote, or as the charming voice 
of Mrs. Potts in Disney's animated feature Beauty and the Beast. Her mesmerizing performance as a zany determined character who is strict and proper but possesses a delightful sense of humor is the glue that holds the film together. Despite her confession that she found working with so many special effects to be limiting on her characterization, she admitted that she found working with storyboards hard and called it acting by numbers. She herself had left London for New York in 1940 because of the war, and a strange twist of fate, Angela had been considered for the role of Mary Poppins, which was ultimately played by Julie Andrews, and Julie Andrews had been asked to play Miss Price. The Humbug Professor of Magical Arts, Amelius Brown, played by the great character actor David Cecil McAllister Tomlinson, who has starred in over 50 Hollywood movies, but who is best known as the authoritarian yet disconnected father, George Banks in Disney's Mary Poppins, and the evil Thorndike with the rubbery face in Disney's The Love Bug. In his role in Red Knobs in Room 6, he had more time on screen, which allowed him to develop his character and comedic powers more than he had been able to in Mary Poppins. He had great fun with the role of Mr. Brown, and the chemistry between him and Angela Lansbury is charismatic. It is interesting to note that he also had experience of World War II as he served in the British Royal Air Force. Ron Moody was originally considered for this role, but I think David Tomlinson was an excellent choice. None of the three Rolling children had acted before, but were chosen by talent scouts visiting schools in London. The eldest, Charlie, aged 11, was played by Ian Wayhill who excellently captured the skepticism of a child who had seen more than they should have. Initially, he is cynical and disbelieving of Miss Price's magical powers, but he gradually comes around. Great artistry is shown in the delivery of his lines and the dry humor that he creates. He later worked at the United Kingdom Pavilion at Epcot, and is now believed to be a train driver. Cindy O'Callaghan played the motherly 10-year-old Carrie Rollins and went on to spend the £3,000 fee that she received for the role on acting lessons and went on to appear in many television roles, including Mrs. Price in EastEnders. She is now a child psychologist. The owner of the Magic Bed Knob, the cheeky six-year-old Paul Rollins, was played by Roy Snart, who was actually eight at the time of filming. He is now a successful computer software entrepreneur. This film would turn out to be the final theatrical film appearances of Reginald Owen, who played General Tigler, Anthony Eustel, who played Avenger, and Tessie O'Shea, who played Mrs. Hobday so commandingly. The bookman's henchman, Thug Swinburne, was played by Sir Bruce Forsyth, known as the host of British television game shows and Strictly Come Dancing. Many of the special effects within this film were created using the sodium vapor process, a forerunner to today's green screen process, although first extensively used in British filmmaking. It was improved and developed at the Walt Disney Studios by Up Iwerks, allowing the combination of live action and animation in the same scene. For instance, the action taking place on the magical band was shot against the yellow screen and then combined with animation in the final print. I will leave a link in the description below to the D23 website 
where Courtney Potter described this river. All of the film was shot in California, mostly on the Walt Disney Studios lot from early March to June 10th, 1970. 1972, the film Bed Knobs and Boomsticks was nominated for five Oscars. Alan Maley, Eustace Lysette, and Danny Lee won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects for its extensive use of matte paintings, mostly by Alan Maley. This was also the first film that P.S. Harrison Allen Shaw worked on as a painter, son of the great matte artist Peter Allen Shaw. Its other nominations were John Mansbridge and Peter Allen Shaw, father of Harrison Allen Shaw, for Best Art Direction. With set design by Emil Curie, and Hal Goldsman. Bill Thomas for costume design, and Richard M. and Robert B. Sherman for their music, which I will discuss in part three of this trilogy, along with the film's restoration and how it was merchandised. Thank you so much for watching part two of my deep dive into Disney's film, Ben Noms and Broomsticks and hope that this was as informative as part one of the trilogy. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you again in part three of the series, where I am excited to discuss the music with you. TTFN, ta-da for now!